crazy. I was like, I. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys how are you i thought you were for a second i was like seriously dude seriously i think everybody else is on here oh are they oh yeah. they are yeah but i'm not can everyone hear me i'm yeah. not <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey greg how are you miss michelle yeah. i was sitting in that chair and i'm dropping yeah, stuff everywhere i did break something so guys, we are going to have a little bit of a last minute change today since Mr. Brian Leverett has no voice and has a high fever. It, well, yeah. Very raspy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was really raspy yesterday. So Brian Conway um, was gracious enough to step in and sit with me. And as we're going to kind of walk through this, um, we're actually, we're in the MCM room, which does have terrible lighting. We really do need it's to work on bad. this. It's not bad. Well, it could be better. We have like a no, dark no. wall over here, guys. Awful. So I Terrible. think I think that's what's kind of hitting with it. We're gonna give it a couple more seconds for our folks to kind of get into it. We're realtors. We're always notoriously late with it. We're like seven minutes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Bridget, by the way, guys, I was not ever late in my life until I got into real estate, and then from there, at that point in time, I have been notoriously late all the time. Always late. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the one team soon. Okay. Yeah. I was asking for it. Yeah, we're on the one team soon. Don't forget to record. Uh, it, yeah, that's already started. There's so many people on here that I don't know, and I love it. Hi, Christina. I see you. Hi, Stephanie. I'll see you next week. Yes, hey, Liz. It didn't give the prompt though that said recording in progress. Oh, didn't? Oh, somebody just gave me uh -huh. their light ring. Oh, shut the front door. Hold on, we gotta play with this. Catherine's heard me. <laughs> Wait, no. Oh, wow. We're not telling scary stories here. Okay. Wait, how do yeah. I do this? This? Okay. Oh, look at that. I got the highlight show in here, guys. Please excuse the frizz. I just had to put a car seat in my mother-in-law's car, which is, by the way, like wrestling a freaking alligator. FYI. Things you do in a day. All right, who's who's admitting all these folks? See, that's a, yeah, that's the hard thing with the brain. Yeah, you can admit people. All right. I think it was good. I think so. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, guys, I, I'm going to start jumping right in if you guys are all comfortable with that. Welcome to 411s and 135s. Um, who, does anybody actually know what those are before we kind of jump into this? Yes, no, maybe so? No, I don't. No? Okay. They are, so 411s and 135s are tools that you use in order to set goals. We're going to go down more into the breakdown of what exactly that looks like. Um, and we probably should introduce ourselves more so, to especially the folks that don't yeah. know who we are. <laughs> I, I don't know who I am. You don't know who you are. Who are you? The great question. Uh, but this is a really great way for us to work towards our goals, figure out what they are, and then also make sure that you are staying on pace with what you are. Uh, so to do brief introductions, my name is Liz Henry. I am the creator of Market Center Mentorship, uh, which is our productivity coaching program for one team. Uh, I'm also an agent here in Dublin, Ohio. And I work with this guy all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Gonna... Please introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ryan Conway. I'm the uh, team lead for Happiness Homes Group here in the KW Consultants Realty Office in Dublin. The number two group in the office this month. Which yes. <laughs> I didn't know I wanted, but now I'm bitter that I'm not number, two, number one. So. Just never Thank satisfied. You. This room's only so big for me to go. But, <laughs> um, I bet. I've been an agent now for 15 years. Um, it shows in the, in the, in the gray, gray hairs. hairs yep. now. Um, so I've worked basically solo with my mother as partners and then have a team that is a uh, well, group technically that is growing right now. Yeah, it's been fantastic. And Ryan, actually, um, we've had the pleasure of having several of his agents, team agents in MCM. So we've gotten to work with them all sorts of places. So jumping into it, um, as we kind of go in, got people jumping in I do. I'm, yeah. Somebody else is admitting them. We got, we got late, we got late bloomers. So we're going to go over a schedule, a breakdown of exactly what it is that we're going to do. Um, Brian made a really good point yesterday as I was going, walking through this is that we want to make sure that you guys know what the end goal is going to be, um, a breakdown of how it's going to structure. And then moving forward, we plan on doing this on a monthly basis and we have it set up for this specific, very, very specific purpose. 
So we have it broken down into two parts. The first part is we're going to talk about six personal perspectives, get us in the right mindset, um, what exactly a 135411 is, why they're important, how do you start, and then how to actually create them. So this is for the individuals that either need refreshers, don't know, are newbies. The second part of this is going to be where we're actually going to talk about our one three fives and four one ones. These are for the folks that have done them. Um, we're going to talk about your breakthroughs, your breakdowns, and then also a way to kind of step away. And as you continue on with your month, give you a thinking model to be structured with. So next month, when you join us, because you're going to, because you're going to love it so much, you can just join us for part two, which we have a small intermission for if you already have the first part covered, because I want to make sure we're using your time effectively. Wait, there's more. Well, oh, wait. There's, there's, not there's, a, there's no sales pitch at the end of this. It's also meant to be purely educational and valuable for everybody that's in here workshop. But if you guys could in the chat throw in there, what's the one thing you hope to leave with today? Because this girl's full of great information. Hopefully, <laughs> at least one of these drops of Jupiter that she drops down on you today. I do. I, it's a deep passion. This is my love love I, language. Wow, that's crazy. I'm entering the the, uh, the call apparently. Are you? Yeah, oh. I just said I was. <laughs> in. <laughs> we got it. We got it. So, so this is how we're going to break this down. So. Six personal perspectives. If you are not aware of these or not familiar with these, these are a way to think about your mindset. And you're probably going, great, we're going to be raw, raw cheerleaders. But here's the deal. If you're about to run a marathon, whether it's for Netflix, binging, or actually running, you got to prep yourself. You got to get the right snacks, got to get the right blankie, or you got to stretch, you got to get the right setup, right? We always need to prepare ourselves. So what we're trying to do with six personal perspectives is prepare you for it. And these are the six first perspectives, and they're going to be um, commit to a path towards self-mastery in a chosen area, focus on 20% that matters most, move from E to P on the 20%, make being learning based the foundation of your action plan, remove your limiting beliefs, and be accountable and live its cycle. There is literally a class I could teach on each individual of these, but today, circle number four in your brain, and let's just focus on being learning-based, which is going to be the foundation of our action plan, which is what we're putting together today. What is the one that you struggle with most? Uh, moving from E to P, number three on there is where I've struggled e a P. lot. Um, very high D personality, very much the type that wants to take something and do it. I can do it quicker, I can do it better, I can do whatever on that, but that's not always putting me in my top 20% activities. Yeah. And so there's only one of me to go around and only so much time that's available to that. So I have to learn to have success through others, but actually leveraging that and being purposeful with my actions. And that's going to be a really big key. And he said something perfect there that I want you guys to write down, being purposeful with your actions and being purposeful with your time. Yep. Um, somebody made the comment to me like, well, Beyonce has the same 24 hours. Yeah, but Beyonce is also leveraged out to the hilt which is why she's able to accomplish as much as she is. And while we her don't- Her are still way more fabulous. <laughs> I know, and her hair, but that's, that's the size of the point. Um, but we want to make sure that you guys are focusing on being purposeful with the time. So again, getting the right mindset, we'll dive more into six personal perspectives and other masterminds that I'll be hosting throughout um, the next couple of months. But today, let's definitely focus on um, make being learning-based the foundation of your action plan. And just to kind of put a, a brief aside, Learning based means that you're not only are you going to take the information, but you're going to talk about it, you're going to discuss it, you're going to put it into action, you're going to do something with it, rather than just write it down in a notepad that then gets lost in the shuffle of your desk. Good and Grady? Now, hold on, you put me under the microscope. I Liz, did. Liz, which one of these do you struggle with? <laughs> Uh, my biggest one is going to be number five, removing, removing limiting beliefs. That's the one that I struggle with 110%. Um, it's always the mentality of like, am I really good enough? Is this imposter syndrome? And it's the, the fine line between like having, having hubris of too much confidence and then being confident in what you're doing. You know what I mean, Jillian? It's like a big, it's a big line with it. So we all kind of have ones that we need to focus on. And there's other ones that we're really good at. And I'm, I'm curious, the people that are watching here, what are they struggling with of any of these? They're familiar with them. Some of you may not be familiar yet with these, but go ahead and throw in the chat there, put one, two, three, four, five, six. One of those that you're struggling with, um, feel free to expand upon it if you want, just something that you might have uh, run into this where this has been helpful, um, identifying these six personal perspectives for yourself. That would be awesome. All right, guys, now getting into the meat potato. What is an actual one, three, five, and four, one, one? Um, 
Oh, I'm skipping ahead. All right, let's dive into the 135. I know I was so excited. I was like, let's go. Um, yes, I am actually this this prep or peppy in, in real life. Uh, so 135, we're going to break this down into digestible chunks. So the one in the 135 is what your yearly goal is going to be. We'll get more into this in just a second. What are your three priorities? And then what are your five strategies to make sure you get to that, those three priorities to get to that one-year goal? Anything to add to this How one? How many total strategies are there then? So this is... So one goal, three priorities, five strategies per, which is 15 strategies. That sounds like a lot. So I'm going to tell you a little secret. I am like, I love these. I live by these. I honestly only have one priority. So mine is technically a one, one, five. Um, for some people, that's the way it works. Uh, there are others that want to expand on it. But for me, I'm very singular and I was very purposeful about what my priority was going to be and then strategizing from that point and how I was going to accomplish it. Um, how many, what is yeah, your, I was gonna say, when I've done these before, um, I always thought that you had to fill all of these out. Mm -mm. It wasn't until my coach actually told me it's like, let's reduce this number. Cause that's a lot of things on there between the one overall, the three priorities and 15 things underneath. And so it just felt like it was filling with useless filler that's in there. Things that were more, I guess, aspirational, but were not necessary to ach achieve our goal. So if there's less that's on the plate to consume on there, less mm -hmm. things that actually have to be accomplished and know that we were successful in achieving our strategies, our priorities and our goals to getting there is more likely that we're gonna be successful in doing it. So I think we took it from that over bloated 15 strategies down there. So I think each one of our priorities usually had, I think there's maybe one that had three yeah. prior or strategies underneath it and others had two or one. Yeah. So make sure you understand like you don't have to make something up just to make the numbers, but you need to make sure that what you're doing is going to get you towards that goal. So take a second and think about what that one year goal is going to be. And I'm going to challenge you with this. Don't say a generic $100,000, you know, six figure earning. Um, and when you say something, I want to make X, Y, Z amount. Think of the core of what that actually, what that actually means. And there's a, there's a deep purpose to this, I promise. So for example, if you say, I want to make $30,000 next year, well, what does that mean for you? Does that mean that you pay off student loan debt, that you're going to be able to now have that additional income per month to maybe in, invest in an investment property to move yourself along with your legacy? Um, do you want to move from your full-time job you have right now into real estate full-time? What is that number going to take? So you need to make sure that it is a smart goal. So it has a measurable metric on it. Um, but when you ask yourself, what does it mean that I'm successful for that one-year goal? It's going to be very different for everybody else. So did you meet your one-year goal last year? Mm -hmm. I was off by 6% on mine, guys, 6%. Um, and for me, that doesn't mean that I completely failed. It just, for me, means that I know what I need, I need to do better. And I look at what my path to success was. We're going to get more into success leaving clues. Um, okay. So helps you stay on the path towards your long-term goals, helps you cut through the noise, focus on what matters, assigns accountability to your team. If you're somebody like you that needs to leverage out and allows you to master the ability of thinking and acting in order of priority. For those of you that are on here that may not be fully real estate or entrepreneurial, or even if you are in real estate, you can do a one, three, five for pretty much everything. This is not just a real estate related thing. So before you move on to the next, I'm curious, Liz, what is the purpose of having a goal? The purpose of having a goal is you need to know where you're going. If you just wander around aimlessly, how do you expect to accomplish anything? You're not, you're wasting your time. Taking a step further, the uh, definition that Gary Keller has given us, the purpose of a goal is to be purposeful in the moment. Ooh. Let's say again, the purpose of having a goal is so you, to be purposeful in the moment. A lot of times when we write out goals and say what we want to achieve, we're thinking about who we currently are. And from the perspective, if I'm trying to accomplish something in the next week, I'm going to factor in things like what's on my schedule currently. How do I currently feel? That, was I well rested last night? Things like that. We're going to go into what energy do I have to put into it from where I'm at right now? But unless you're truly completely content with where you are right now, it's not going to be the most purposeful setting of a goal if you're only thinking about where you currently are. Think, of, close your eyes, dream, think about it, what you actually want to accomplish. So if you could turn around and look back at the year and say, I had a great year. I was successful this year. And I would know that I was successful this year if I was able to accomplish this, paying off that debt, putting that down payment on investment property, hitting my profit goal. Go from who that person is that you want to be a year from now and make the decisions backwards about what you should be doing right now. 
that's a perfect way of putting it. Like what is Zoom's it? Zoom's over. Zoom, no, we're not doing a mic drop guys, but think about it this way. Like that's amazing. Close your eyes. Who do you want to be in the future? Like you have the ability to fantasize and say, this is the person that I want to be. This can be what your health goals are going to be. This can be your professional, your personal, whatever that case may be. Don't limit yourself to just saying, well, I can only put goals for work. No, you can put goals on everything. You can have you can definitely work towards it. And here's, I'm going to go even further with this one. Not only from a year from now, are you going to look at it and say, I had a successful year because I followed and listened to what I was supposed to do, but you're also going to be able to say what made me successful and how do I replicate that so that you're not waking up the next morning after your one year mark and going, oh my God, how am I going to do this? You already have it, the proof in the pudding. You're able to track and see what it is you're doing that's working and what's not working. And that's a huge because six, takeaway. Because success leaves clues. Like little breadcrumbs. Well, you'll quote me on that later, by the way, guys. Okay, so this is the 135. Now there's a 411, and we're gonna get to why they're different and why they both need to work in tandem. They're like the peanut butter and jelly. All right, so a 411. It's a little backwards, but a 114 does not sound as cool. So it is based off of what your one-year goal is going to be. Then you break that down into what your one-month goal is going to be. And then you break that down into each week of what those goals are going to be. We will have an outline of what this looks like later on, but think big picture-wise. If you have a scrap of paper, start kind of writing down in the notes as they hit you what it is you're thinking of what those goals are going to be. I want to make sure I make this caveat. Do not make your four week goals a to do list. That is not the purpose of this. Okay. And here's another really cool thing I want you guys to think about. And I'm going to bring this up again later because I love calendars and scheduling. 80% of your calendar needs to be you working towards your goals. 80% of your calendar needs to be what is on that 411. Be purposeful with that time. 411 helps you discover and gain clarity on your priorities for your year, month, and week. Um, creates a better counterbalance between your personal and professional life. This one hits hard home, for, I think, for both of us. Oh, yeah. Why for you? Um, <laughs> he loves when I put him on the spot. It does. No. Yeah, I mean, because it is hard to balance things throughout the throughout business, throughout personal, throughout family, through relationships, and all that. Um, but anything, any goal that you have that is not written down is not structured yeah. and takes into account all the actual variables and the challenges that are facing and getting real with it it leads to or towards failure honestly it does so for those who know me that those that don't i have two children under the age of five both boys it's mass chaos plus the menagerie of animals um while trying to work a non-traditional job married to a person that has a traditional job so to say there's a lot of chaos it's an understatement, but I think that we're all in the same boat when it comes to that. Um, so for me, creating that counterbalance and having a very clear purpose about what my time is supposed to be allocated towards um, helps in a couple different things. Do you remember those limiting beliefs I talked about earlier in the call? And if you have those two, this helps with that. And this is why. I know in a single day, if I set down my intentions of what I'm, I need to accomplish in a day and I get those completely done and accomplished, for me, I get to walk away satisfied and knowing that I did what my best and I fought the good fight. And now I get to focus solely on just my family time and allows me to be more present in the moment because I'm not worried or have that guilt of, did I do enough? Am I doing well enough? Did I get to this person? Making sure that you're able to put down and be purposeful about what you're doing so that you're able to step away from your phone and you're able to focus on the things that you want to, whether it be family or hobbies or what is it you do in your spare time? Sell real estate? So real. <laughs> Scroll Facebook, Scroll. stuff like that. Go down a TikTok it's, rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, but this also raises your level of personal accountability um, and allows you to achieve extraordinary results and less time, less stress. If you think about it, uh, what's a? I want. I I'm trying to go away from a food analogy. So give me a good analogy. I know I do all of no, it. I was going to mention about this. You said about it being like a task list and stuff, and avoiding having that. But it is it is purposeful to focus on the things that are leading measures towards your success on there. So it's not just I'm going to have one closing this week. Well, if you don't have something in contract, that's not possible True. to accomplish that. But if you don't have a client, you can't get that one contract either. And if you don't have appointments you don't have that so it's working backwards so that what is the thing that I can actually do today mm -hmm. this week that actually leads towards my overall goals and ask yourself honestly is this activity that I'm doing leading towards that end result that I'm getting to scrolling Facebook for two hours is not going to help you with that goal at all 
maybe if uh, we're not going to get that conversation, <laughs> but uh, so basically it does help you keep accountability. And it talks right here when we talk about the level of personal accountability, that's, I think, the perfect way yeah. of phrasing it. And what I'm doing right now is that helping me towards my ultimate goal and purpose is that, am I ultimately using my time wisely? And am I using it to achieve what I want to? So in that one week that you see right here with the four weeks, make that your goals. But then as you schedule out your week, because I know you guys all time block because you're smart business people, and we'll go on a class on that later. But when you're time blocking out, I said 80% of your calendar needs to be your form one, one. And this is why, what am I doing today to accomplish that goal for the month? What am I doing to accomplish my goal for the week? Am I doing, am I going on the right path? Am I going in the right direction? Anything I just want to add? I get very impassioned by this. This is my love language. We always was it, overestimate what we can accomplish in a year's time, but underestimate what we can accomplish in three years, five years time. Yeah. But a lot of um, the, the challenge in what we're doing with activities, um, losing my train of thought, <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is when it, we only have a finite amount of time that's available to us and a finite, I mean, we have to make so many different decisions within a day um, and, and what we choose to say yes to. And for everything you say that you choose to say yes to, you're saying no to something else. So when we talk about the imbalance of life, personal and business, am I doing enough, not doing enough, doing too much, um, imposter syndrome type things. Mm -hmm. And the reality is you're just not clear on exactly what your goals are and what the activities are that achieve those goals. So you may find yourself saying yes to a lot of things that actually are saying no to your goals. That's very true. And guys, just as a heads up, don't think that you can walk away and instantly just like jot one of these down. It might take you some time and it might be a little bit of a struggle. So don't get disheartened and don't give up. And it might be something you need to process and understand ultimately, what is that big goal for me? What does that look like? And then working backwards. So I just want to make sure that I give a, a give heart and give yourself some grace when it comes to this, because these are, these are big chunks of, of, um, your identity as well, kind of being infused with this one. What is my purpose? What is my mission? So take it seriously. All right. I'm going to move on. <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm like, end scene, end stage left. Don't forget the brain. Oh, I, I know, I forget that. Uh, so how does following a model help my business? So we've talked about this, we've kind of gotten into it. And again, oh, oh, oh guys, here we go. Success leaves clues, the pattern of what is working and not working. But more importantly, a model is a pattern of something to be made. So it's an example for imitation. Um, serving as or capable of serving, serving as a pattern. That's what a model is. And you follow those patterns and clues and create a model that results in the best results. All right, I'm going to jump to the next slide that's going to give you real life examples because y'all are going to get this. Okay, example one, you get off an exit early to avoid a long traffic light on your way home. After years of the same route, you've now figured out how to save time because GPS tells you get off at exit two, but you know if you get off at exit one, you avoid that seven minute long light and you can get home in time to feed your cat on time. This is called pattern deficiency. You subconsciously or consciously without really much thought have figured out how to do something better and small adjustments, micro adjustments in your life that have done it. Now think bigger, pattern deficiency. What can you be doing in your life right now to be more efficient? Because we all have the same amount of time, but how are we being more purposeful with it? Number two, burns me deeply, guys. Burns me deeply. You walk into a grocery store and the layout is totally different and it takes you twice as long to finish your grocery shopping and you are understandably mad. Raise your hand if Kroger's has recently changed their outline of their store and you can't find their garbanzo beans. Thank you. And it makes me so angry. And I know it sounds silly, but I have a plan. I have my list. Surprise, surprise. It's organized out. I know where things are. And now it takes me twice as long. And now I'm running out of time. And there goes my time. Patterned action. I know you make fun of me, but I have a plan. And my coupons, people. Clip coupons. Saves you money. Example three, you feed your dog every morning after their walk. And this morning, you got your coffee first. And your dog is literally harumphing at you like, excuse me. I'm starving as I'm going to go sit in my orthopedic dog bed you bought me with a heated seat. We feel this. What does your dog say? Rough. <laughs> but these are pattern schedules. I mean, even our animals get into it. Uh, our children get into it. Daylight savings time is murder in my house. 
And I know it seems really tiny and you're probably thinking, why are you telling us these weird stories? But here's the thing, you do it without even ever realizing that you're doing it, to be honest. You get into such a habit with it that sometimes it can be really hard to break. And so this is what I'm telling you. When I tell you to give yourself grace with those 411s and 135s, it's because you're probably going to have to break some habits that you've already put into place or put into place that you didn't even realize it in order to be better and to achieve more. And that's the first thing I thought of when you said example number one there is essentially driving in a little bit of autopilot mm -hmm. or just going through the same pattern, how you drove to drop your kids off at school, how you drove to get to work, going to, you know, going to this Kroger that's <laughs> just causing you so much pain. They just driving to these places, you can do it basically with your eyes closed because you've done it so many times. And the question you have to ask yourself is, are you driving your your business, your workday, your habits are just on autopilot and are they getting you the results that you actually want or are you being purposeful with it until you shine the light on it and actually put it in writing and those actions have meaning and lead towards a goal that has meaning towards you. Yeah. You just drive on autopilot. All right. Here's my takeaway from this one. And this is one an exercise you guys are going to do because you're going to break your habits that are bad because you're going to, because you want to be better and you're going to put this towards self-mastery. Think about it this way. Whenever you get frustrated with yourself or frustrated with the process, well, let's say you've been going to the same job for two years, you know, the route. And if you've gotten to the point, like I have, sometimes I actually get to the office without realizing how I got there because my brain was elsewhere. Terrifying. I know. Yes. I'm a good driver. Do not shake your head at me, Michelle and Bridget. I actually am. However, uh, let's say you change jobs and you go to a different office and now you have to be really cognizant of what's going on. And it kind of takes you a while to get back into that pattern. It might take you a little bit longer to get there and you might have to figure some stuff out, but eventually you get back into that pattern and habit. So again, as you're going through this, make sure that you give yourself some grace and you walk through it with an understanding that you are human and it's going to take you some time to kind of figure the stuff out. Fair enough. Sounds Fair good. enough. All right. Where do I start? This is the big one. And this is where you're going to have to put some work into it, but you're going to, because I know you're going to, um, what are your goals? Do you know where you're going? Your business goals, personal goals, that kind of stuff. What's, uh, what's one of your big personal goals for next year? One of my big personal, I guess it's technically financial in there too, is to invest in getting a lake house. Ooh, close by driving distance. Close to that. Yeah. Yes. Currently I have a cabin that's within that drive. So Ah. I'm going to get another cabin. you got to get a lake house. Now. Hey, happy nest team. Guess who's having a lake party? Okay. No, maybe. Find out what weekends he's not in town. All right, guys. Think about what your personal goals are going to be. This can be something, whether it's for health, um, it could be your wealth, it could be um, your personal relationships, anything you want to when it comes to that. And you don't have to just limit it to a one singular one. Um, what are your business goals? You need to know your numbers and understanding that. We talk about this down here and I'm actually going to have Ryan talk about the pain threshold because I stole this line, literally stole this line from him. And I was like, ah, I got to get to this. But before we do, knowing what your big why and your personal mission are, are going to be huge. If you do not know how to find that, whether it's your big why or your personal mission, I'm going to give you my email address. I'll put it in the chat. You're going to email me and I have a worksheet literally simplifies it. And we're going to walk through what that looks like because it can be overwhelming to understand what your personal mission is because now you just sound like some corporation and a personal mission is the thing that you ask yourself and what I'm doing, is it in alignment with this? Before I say yes to this, is this in alignment with what my personal mission is? And knowing your numbers and that pain threshold, I'm going to give it over to Ryan because he put it so beautifully and I stole it from him. <laughs> So a lot of people, when they get into this business, you ask them what they want to accomplish in the first year. And if the go-to number is to say, I want to make at least 100,000, kind of have to question that as soon as it comes in. Not because it's not a great goal to have or it's not realistic or anything like that. It's because, I don't know if it's in our society to go hashtag six figures or whatever right now. A lot of people just think six figures is the mark of success, but it may not have meaning to you. So if somebody says, whatever number they're saying, this is the number I want to make uh, from this. So if it is 100000 so if it was $99,000, you would quit. You would say that I failed. Most people are going to say no. No, it's still, that would be incredible. And, okay, so what if it was 80 or 70? And just keep going down from there. And you find out the reality of what that number is. And it's usually, it is covering what their expenses are to make it so, uh, especially in real estate. Real estate does have a really high, 
churn rate or failure rate that's in there because people come in with nothing but aspirational goals, but not being clear about what does it take for me to make this sustainable, to stay the course with this, to, I guess, proof of concept of anything, of getting into it that way, and then growing from there, learning mm-hmm. that I can actually do this. Now, what can I, what can I do with this? And that's fantastic. So again, guys, this is where we talk, about, this is where I keep saying, take the time to figure this out. And, and be really diligent about this. This isn't just some uh, quick fix or you're going to lose 10 pounds in a week kind of thing. This is more of a take an actual legitimate look at your life. Look at your expenses, pull a profit and loss statement. If you don't know what a profit and loss statement is, email me, we will get that figured out. Um, we have models for a lot of these things, but knowing what that number is going to be is huge. And knowing what that pain threshold is going to be, because that's what's going to continually motivate you. And that's going to also motivate you knowing what your big why is. So if your pain threshold, you said was six figures, but we really discover it's really 40,000 because 40,000 is the number that it's going to take for you to pay off the rest of your student loan and to pay your family to vacation next year in Disney. Isn't that going to be a lot more motivating than some sort of ambiguous goal of a hundred thousand? You're not going to have the oomph behind it. Well, I like that you brought up profit in there in the PNL. So I'm surprised you used my other phrase. In this. I know but I was going to. <laughs> the highest level of accountability in doing this is to actually get naked with your numbers and dive into your profit and loss statement. If you have no idea how to spell PNL, I highly implore you to actually go into learning more about that. Um, KW through the MAPS program has a great training program. Comes up once a quarter. It was actually just earlier this week, but it's called Profit Camp. It's taught by Jeannie Osnes, who's out of Eugene, Oregon. Fantastic class. Not the sexiest topic you've ever come across on there, but is one of the most, it connects so many different things about living a, a life by design. Um, the 135 and the and the 401, it connects all this stuff together in living what those big dreams are. So it goes over covering what your what keeps your household driving, what keeps that going, and where do you fit that within your budget, and then putting your your dreams and your goals in there as a profit allocation, and and being purposeful of deciding how many units does this break down to, so how much volume does this break down to, dictating what your activities need to be Mm -hmm. to not only cover your expenses but achieve those big goals so you know what you're doing is that is correct and on course so it put in the chat by the way guys if you think that uh ryan and i should do a segment called getting naked with your numbers clothing optional no really please wear clothes please wear clothes you don't have to have your video (laughs) i think we just broke a rule somewhere in this conversation (laughs) it's it's encouraged It is. So we're, now we're actually going to break down what those look like and give you some uh, some examples with it. So this is a one three five. This is completely filled out, but remember, it doesn't have to be. Don't don't overwhelm yourself for the sake of just filling in a blank space. Think thoroughly and be purposeful about it. So and here's a big pull or um, take away from this one. If you hit one of your priorities, knock it out of the park it should allow you to completely hit your annual goal. I'm going to repeat that again. You should set your priorities to a point that if you accomplish even just one out of the three priorities, just one, you knock it out of the park, that you accomplish your annual goal. Did everyone get that? Noodle on that? Let it sink in. So for example, this one is just closing 122 units. I'm putting a metric on it, being part of my SMART goal. My, I have three different priorities based off of that for closing 73 listing transactions, closing 49 buyer transactions and customer care. Customer care kind of threw threw me for a little bit because I thought to myself, well, what's the measurable on this one? How do I do that? But then I realized by doing that priority, it makes strategies, uh, priority one and two, that much better and that much longer lasting. So you understand the, like the reason and purpose behind what you're doing is constantly be moving towards what your goal is going to be. I have to have the customer care because if I continue to do all these other lead gen, gen strategies, but I'm not taking care of my clients, then I'm basically, it's, it's a wash. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So what I would say, if you want to put a metric to priority number three, there, customer care, what I would use is, because I see strategy number one is execute promise script program. Mm -hmm. So that comes from Mike Hicks, who's out of uh, Idaho, I believe it's it's out out that way. Utah. Utah? All right. (laughs) So Mike Hicks, he is the originator of the promise script. If you get a chance, go up on YouTube, search for Mike Hicks and um, come across that. 
as he is, they deliver it. So the purpose of that promise is ultimately to lead towards they're going to give you a five star review for your service. And so that's in there too, getting the reviews from every client you're getting from there. So make that part of the metric is to obtain X. So if it's 122 units on there, say set, we want to get 75% of our closed units to result in a review and maintaining at least a 4.8 star or better review average on there. That's how you'll know that you accomplish that goal of customer care. That's actually a fantastic way of putting it. My gosh, you're full God, of resources. I ended the Zoom again. Oh, oh, we're not mic dropping, please. Okay, guys, we literally had to move rooms because of his ego. We're good. Um, but again, <laughs> you're the Kool-Aid man. Okay, sorry. This is why we're not allowed to sit next to each other in classes. <laughs> you are the older brother I never wanted. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, looking at the priorities again. Take a look at what's going to make, make the most sense for you of what you want to work towards what that annual goal is. Let's go into 411s. So I personally love 411s because I have a little bit of a difficulty sometimes focusing on something, and this helps me break it down. Uh, great book. Stop giving me that look. Great book to read, by the way. It's called The 12-Week Year. Uh, it, I will send a link in the chat. It's a phenomenal book that helps you break down and says, why can't you accomplish your annual goal in 12 weeks? That's not the purpose of this right now, but if you're like me, it helps me break down and really kind of focus and laser in on what I'm doing. I did not fill this in because mine is insane looking, uh, but I wanted to make sure I color coordinate and you kind of understood what the big thing is. What's my annual job goal, my business goal, personal, financial, personal, these can topics can be a little bit different you don't yours are yours are labeled a little bit differently than this aren't they we ain't color -coded. <laughs> nor are they color coded i'm very well aware but so there is a difference between a job and a business goal especially if like you're a rainmaker or if you have a position outside the norm of just a singular solo agent um or if you're a part-timer you could also do something for your right yeah, so if you're part of a team or group on there whether you're the leader or a member of it maybe call it more of a role Role. that's that's actually really good really yeah sure. but it's like what do you need to become what do you need to accomplish in your specific role as it relates to the overall business and even if you're a solo agent too the job role goal that's on there is more about you personally what what it might be an education goal mm -hmm. that's on there what do i need to learn who do i need to talk to that leads towards the business stuff which is probably going to be a little bit more numbers based on there how many conversations do i need to have how many appointments yeah. said and met how many closings contracts all that and so separate the two on there even if you are completely solo it could be and you could actually even break it down where you have business goals are your units whereas your job goal if you want to change that word that could be something where it could be um self-development or et cetera personal development personal development it could be that where the education is a big thing i'm going to attend xyz amount of class classes each month and i'm going to have the focus of this being what those are and what am i going to gain out of it because remember personal uh, six personal perspective number four is being learning based and that's part of being learning based is taking what you're learning and actually applying it, talking about it, uh, materializing it, taking it from this abstract to really making this tangible thing that you're able to work and move with and apply to what you're doing. And that's a big thing. So this breaks it down and it's like, okay, this is what my annual goal is going to be. That's already set. I now need to figure out each month what that goal is going to be and then breaking it down per week. And again, this is not a to-do list. That's for your calendar, guys. This is going to be, what is it I need to accomplish this week? And then marking out on your calendar, again, time block it out. I'm going to accomplish this today. For example, if, if your business goal is I want to make, you know, 73 contacts, and this is why you need to do your 135. I'm getting a little out of there. I, I apologize, but this is, I want to, I want to show you something. Okay. If you want to have, let's say part of your strategies is holding 86 listing appointments with a 90% conversion. What is it going to take for you to, to get that 86 listings? What do you have to do in a singular week? How do you need to accomplish that? How do I need to add 480 new contacts into my database? That's where those strategies and those, those come into play on these weekly goals. So if I know that I need to make 480 contacts over a 12 month period, that breaks down to how many per month? What, 40 per month? 
40, right? Yes. You bring me out to do that. I know. God, you would think if it's like a 3% commission, I can calculate it to like the nth degree. But this is, yes. Who has a calculator? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody pull out their calculator. Greg, I can see you. You're my numbers guy. 3% was just an arbitrary number. It is not actually. It is a number that I pulled out of air. I have no idea where that number came from. Now, For, now, now, Liz, when you actually do your math, I did, I did my, okay. She did the math. I did the math. Go ahead. I will say when it comes to the weekly goals, when you're writing this out, do not start, like one of the um, problems that people have is they'll do week one, two, three, and four, right off the bat. Mm -mm. You go as the week goes on there, because what happens, Liz, if you don't accomplish your goals for that week? Did you fail? Did you fail the month? Did you fail the year by not accomplishing that week? That's where you have to shift your mindset, guys. We're going to talk about mindset again a lot, but this is where you have to shift that mindset is that just because I didn't accomplish it this week doesn't mean that I don't have the chance to get it accomplished next week or the week after that. And that's where you have to continually. And that's where we say, know your numbers, know where you are and know what path you're going towards. Yeah. Try not to think about everything. Like we're setting what the goal is, but really getting there, it's about the pace. Because you could go start off with the sprint and then jog the rest of the way home on that, or you could be jogging right from the beginning on this, is that it allows you to dictate where where's my pace. Am I on pace? Am I behind pace? Or am I ahead of pace on this? So if you do happen to fall behind pace at any point, don't start getting that mindset, like those limiting beliefs come in there and saying, I just failed. I've fallen behind. I'm not going to hit my goal. And, and you're going to tear yourself down from the inside is to say, what do I need to do? What am I willing to commit to, to get myself back on pace? I know in the next week, I've got a family thing. I've got, it's a busy week already with my other obligations on there. And I want to fulfill those obligations to the other people that I've in my life, that in the other important parts of my life, I've said yes to. So it's unrealistic to say, well, next week I'll just get caught back up. Mm -hmm. It's to look at, afford yourself time. Is it going to take me a month to get back on pace? Is it going to take me the next quarter? Is it just, let's just divide it by the 11 or 12 months that we have remaining at that point to get me back on course towards that. Remember how we said earlier that this helps with the counterbalance between your personal and professional life? Guys, this is it. This is why. And this is why it's hugely important, especially in a business that is uh, as volatile and roller coaster as real estate. Very inconsistent. You I, remember, I remember a couple of years ago, I was in an agent leadership council and there was an agent there. I don't know what was her name, but she, she said, you know what? I have a really, I'm struggling with that not having that corporate paycheck, that guaranteed money that was coming in. And I asked her, how many transactions did you do the previous year? And she said, well, 36. And the reality was that she's getting 10 to 12 more paychecks than mm -hmm. she was at the corporate job. And they were for the most part, more significant amount that was coming in there. It's just not having that consistency with security to someone, but is it really secure to have a corporate job where you could get laid off in it? There's volatility in all this stuff. You actually have the power and the control to dictate your path to, to creating your own consistencies with it and, and your own time. So if you do need to take time off to spend with family, to go on that vacation, to be purposeful with other things you've said, yes, you're affording yourself the ability to do that. And that's a huge thing, guys. So again, take a deep sigh of relief because I think sometimes, especially I deal with a lot of new agents and coming into it, it's like, holy cow, Batman, this is terrifying. And this allows you to have a little bit of that peace of mind with it. All right, we have gone through all of it. We're gonna go through how to set weekly goals. Uh, and then we're gonna go to, we're gonna just kind of skip through intermission because this is our first one. Uh, we're gonna go walk through the breakthroughs and breakdowns. So moving forward, this is how we're gonna function on the back end of it. So next month when we meet again on November 18th, I anticipate and expect all of you to be here with your 411s and your 135s and everybody to at least have one breakthrough and one breakdown. It'll make more sense in a second. Here we go. Okay, if you could set your weekly goals, if you could only accomplish one thing this week, one thing, is it number one? Is it number one? Are you accomplishing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you scrolling, scrolling through TikTok because you're, you're avoiding it? Are, is it something that feels so big and huge and unachievable that you're going to continually put it off? Or are you going to put yourself in those limiting beliefs? What are you doing? Is that number one? Okay, cool. Let's say you got it. Should you earn the right to focus on number two? And I said, earn the right to focus on number two. Is it number two? Is what you're doing and are you putting your priorities into place? Have you struggled with this? Put my priorities in place? 
Yes. Yeah, they're all in a pile. <laughs> no, all I always say I want to get my ducks at least in the same pond, but right now they're just like a bunch of drunk caterpillars flopping around everywhere. <laughs> but that's the thing is, have you earned the right to focus on number two? What is the one thing you can do to accomplish this? And here's the kicker, and this is why I have it highlighted. If it is vague, how do will we know you're successful? Stop with vague, get very clear, very specific. And that is the biggest thing I want to say is get some clarity in what you're doing. And you want to add to that one? And honestly, if you're not getting clarity on it and stuff and you're, you might actually know like, what's the thing that I need to accomplish, but you're not being honest with yourself. And uh, you have ah. to be super, you have to have super clarity so you can be honest with yourself in my own course or not. Um, but you, you have control over your destiny. Um, what is the one thing most likely to stop you? What is the solution for that? Again, these are what the limiting beliefs we talked about before. We're a little bit behind schedule. So we're going to zoom through. I know I, we talk a lot. What was a shocker? Typically during this point in time it would be intermission, which is where you'd be able to jump on. But we would do the second half, which is where we talk about our breakthroughs and breakdowns. Let's jump into that. This is the part two. Breakthroughs. Oh, who has seen this model before? where we have that natural achievement and we hit that level and that ceiling. And then we have to basically go through and create those foundational models, which are patterns and habits we put together in order to break through to that, to create that new achievement. Uh, that's essentially what we're talking about. You're continually, continually improving. If you say to yourself right now, I know everything I need to, you're complacent. It is never good to be complacent. Don't be stagnant. You got to keep moving with it. Um, and the big thing, these are the big questions we're going to ask you. What was your breakthrough this month? What models did you use this month? Did the use of the models help you achieve your version of success? And how can you improve your current models? And here's, do you have the page on the um, pattern actions? I did a couple, there's a quote that I wanted to use that I forgot to share, but this is the big thing about this. And this is why I want you guys to continue. We're going to have these conversations over and over again. Um, what models did you use and did they work? So back, going back to pattern deficiency, about where you always got off and you figured out how to be better with your time. Success leaves clues, but so do your mistakes. And this is a great quote from uh, Brandon Mull. It says, smart people learn from their mistakes, but the real sharp ones learn from the mistakes of others. Take a deep breath. I get goosebumps. I'm gonna say that phrase just one more time. Smart people learn from their mistakes, but the real sharp ones learn from the mistakes of others. That's huge. And that's, again, a big purpose of this as well. So when you think to yourself next month, when you're sitting down to get on this call, what's the purpose of it? The purpose is for one, to hold yourself accountable to this because you're going to accomplish the 411 and 135. And the second thing about it is, is that you're going to be able to listen to what other people are going through and what models they're using and learn from their success or their mistakes. And you or yourself are going to share the same because we've got to start learning and got to start getting to the point where you can look at it and, and say honestly to yourself, this is what I want. This is what I'm going for. And this is the clarity that I have. Anything else on that? <laughs> no, that was fantastic because I think we all like to think that we're somehow uniquely unicorns out here with a bunch of creativity where, where God's gift to real estate coming in and could do things different. But the reality is there's been thousands of years of different human behavior. There's been tons of real estate agents that succeed, proceed you. And there's always somebody that's doing more, doing it more efficiently or whatever. And there's opportunities to learn from other people and how they've done it. You're, you're, you're going to go through the same things. I remember, um, and I know we're short on time here, but the millionaire real estate agent book, MREA, um, it, I had the book, it was sitting on my desk. I've read through it. I've read all the models that I've adhered to that. But one of the things I neglected to look at was the first hundred pages of that book. Mm. Uh, and so my coach actually challenged me to read through it and going through that what I realized is that Gary Keller wrote back in, what was that, 2000 ish, right around there? Yeah. Turn a millennium, I put out the book that he was basically already going to tell me what I was going to do wrong and why I was going to do it wrong and how I was going to learn from it and how I was going to change it. It was all there in the first 100 pages of that book. So even though I thought I would, could be different, I can do it my way, I want it to sound like me, look like me, do all these things, is the reality is I'm just like everybody else. Everybody else is going through that same thing. So learn from it. It'll, get, it'll take you from starting at, you know, at the batter's box to actually starting off from, you know, second or third base on this and getting towards your goals. <laughs> Okay, well, now, oh, thank you. I was like, yeah. ooh, go team. Uh, so this is the point in the conversation where we would have an open discussion and we would go to the audience and ask for their breakthroughs. 
we're short on time. We're gonna kind of go to the next portion just to make sure you guys know the pattern. So next call that you're on, cause you're gonna be on the call, you'll be with us. Um, and I love this quote by Linus Pauling. The best way to have a good idea is to have a lot of them. One of them eventually will stick. <laughs> Um, breakdowns. Oh, this is going to be the nugget. I want you guys to soak this in. Um, breakdowns. Why didn't you meet your goals? Uh, did you feel you didn't need them? Do you think they limit your freedom? Are they just opinions? They won't work for you. You don't need to change. Here's the deal, guys. I am truly under the belief that the core of the reason you don't do things is two points, fear and ego. Sometimes both, oftentimes both. Is your ego getting in the way or is your fear and your limiting beliefs getting in the way? You see how we're keep talking about these like six personal perspectives over and over again? Um, Cause that's a huge thing. Why didn't you meet your goals? And you need to be honest with yourself because here's the deal. This is also a six personal perspective. I do not want to hear the victim mentality. That is, there's no room in this for victim mentality. Honest with yourself, the clarity of why didn't I meet my goals and what do I need to do to adjust and shift that? What did you do when you didn't meet your goal? What I need to do? No, what didn't, what, why didn't you meet your goal? Which one? I didn't meet all of them. Oh, again, ego and fear, <laughs> ego. Uh, when we don't meet our goals and that's going back to that pain threshold when we talked about before, just because you don't hit a hundred thousand, let's say that's your goal, are you going to quit? What is that pain threshold? And knowing what that is tells you what your limits are going to be on this one. Now, this is where we're going to get into this. This is, this is, this is my love. Okay. Open discussion of breakdowns. We'll pause. And this is where we would share how we failed this week and what we're going to do better. Um, this is, this is the final slide guys. And then we will let you, we'll open up the, um, for conversation and any questions they have, but this is the big thing I want you to walk away with. And this is, this is the think model. And this is huge for me. Whether you had a breakthrough or a breakdown for either or both, would you consider your outcome a success? So even if you didn't hit your goal, was what you accomplished still success and why? And then how big is your box and what's holding you back from going bigger? And this is where we get that comment, where how big is your box? We wanna look at what our thinking is and what the time and effort it's gonna take for it. And the bigger the thinking and the bigger the time and effort, the bigger the outcomes. How big are you thinking right now? Are you saying a number because it's safe? Or are you saying the true number that you truly, truly want and you're gonna go for it? Or are you just throwing out an arbitrary number that has no meaning to you? So therefore you're not gonna really put the time and effort into it. Do you see what I mean? What am I thinking about? How big is my thinking versus how passionate am I about what I'm doing? So I'm going to put the time and effort into it that I'm being purposeful with because I've set my goals. I know what I need to do to get to that point. And am I getting there and having bigger outcomes? As you can tell, I'm very passionate about this. And I'm so big about this because I come from a world that has very, very small little worlds. And it took a lot of failure to get to a point where I see a bigger world and I want a bigger world and I've got to figure out how to get it. And so I look at my past and I say, well, what did I do to get here? And what are those success clues? And how do I apply that to what I'm doing today? So you see how it all cohesively works together is this, this is the biggest thing is how big is your box and what's holding you back from going bigger? What's your thoughts on that one, Ryan? I know that's a mic drop right there, by the way, guys, mm -hmm. I rendered him speechless. We're going to mark this down in history. I, Liz Henry, have, have rendered Ryan Conway speechless with my passionate, passionate plea for you to ask yourself, how big is your box and what's holding you back from going bigger? I think the thing that holds people back is not having that plan to begin with and knowing that it's on course. Am I heading in the right direction and will it actually get me there by the time I want to get there? That's very true. So I think that's what holds a lot of people back. Um, when thinking about these goals too, for the setup before, it's like we overestimate what we're going to do in a year and underestimate what we're going to do in three to five years. Um, is it's it's that lack of plan? Mm -hmm. It's not there that stops us from actually accomplishing that big goal that we think we can accomplish. We keep doing things exactly the same way and expect different results, which is the definition of insanity. It is. I do. I love that. I love that quote. Yeah. Doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results is insanity. We're not insane people. We're in real estate. As, as we've gone through this too, and we're talking about these goals, I'm sure a lot of people here are thinking about what am I going to do in 2023? The, what is that big goal? And can you go back real quick to that one, three, five page? Mm -hmm. one? 
There you go. So I know she has on there a sample in here for that annual goal is one and 122 units. What I want people to think about is actually expanding this into basically three complementary tech goals. So will go in there for real estate agent business because closing 122 units, what exactly are those units on there? Mm -hmm. Is that 122 $50,000 units or is it 122 $500,000 units? I think we can both agree those aren't the exact same thing. <laughs> So what is the what is the volume as well? Mm -hmm. What is your volume goal and is it complementary to what that unit's goal is as well? Because you can kind of prevent yourself from, I guess, sandbagging this a little bit. If I'm just going for units, I'm going to take on anything I possibly can. True. But does it actually align with your other goals of actually hitting the volume number as well? And both of those are important. And units is important because it corresponds to market share. Is it better to have one giant deal or 10 smaller ones that all equal the same volume? The smaller ones tend to be better because you're getting more market share on it. You might have a little bit less expense doing one versus the variable cost of having the 10, but it's important to have those to drive together. And the one that keeps both of those numbers incredibly honest, the other goal on there is a profit goal. Mm. Being very clear because units and volume don't pay the bills. They don't do those things. They correspond to that. But if you're cheating your way to get there, if you're uh, running bloated with expenses, if you're cutting commissions, yeah. things like that to get the volume and the units knocked out, are you actually hitting your profit goal that funds that perfect life? That's a really great way of putting it. Yeah. Are you cutting commissions? Zooms over again. Oh my gosh, we're not mic dropping yet. All right, guys, we have literally talked and taken up a good chunk of your time and I appreciate you immensely for it. I'm just doing a time check. Oh, two minutes to go. Woo! All right, even though we were we were slacking with this one. All right, I am opening up the floor. Um, last little bit, I'm gonna leave this up as we, we open up the floor for any questions. If you wanna take action, um, here's a great book. Atomic Habits is phenomenal. The author, James Clear, does an amazing podcast on Bigger Pockets Real Estate Podcast, which I also suggest you follow. They're amazing. Um, ben Kinney does a phenomenal YouTube video for how to plan anything on um, one page using GPS. And then we'll, November 18th, next month, we'll be doing this training again. We typically would do it the third Thursday. However, we've got a business planning clinic next month. We wanted to plan around that. Um, and there's my email address. Reach out to me if you want any links to any of this or have any questions or want any um, worksheets or anything else. But for right now, I will open it up. Questions, comments, quibbles, consternations, quidditch, anything. I'm sorry. Oh my God, dead silence. Have I rendered you, have I rendered you speechless or uninterested? One of the two. We'll, we'll go with No, not uninterested. Just a lot to new to <laughs> Very She's entertaining. I do. I can't handle the silence. Is that Stephanie? Yes. I knew your voice. Have you next week? No. Well done, Liz and Ryan. Uh, it's a <laughs> lot to digest and unpack. And it was helpful seeing the 135 and the 411 utilized together. Because I think that that's where, for me, there's been a mismatch of communication or maybe understanding of their usability together. Mm -hmm. No. And that's actually a really common misconception is people think, well, I can just do one without the other. And really the purpose, the 411 really drives the GPS. It, it's a huge way for you to understand like what it is. How do I prioritize what I'm trying to do? And that's, yeah, no, this is, this is good. I mean, it's definitely like creating a roadmap using for like the goal planning tools to achieve. No, I love it. Who, okay. I who, think, I think the, the one thing with the GPS and 135, when people fill those out, Where's immediately going after they do? Oh, in a drawer. In drawer. I know. Nobody looks at it. So I think posting it, putting it up on your whiteboard, on your, um, even turning it into the, the dream board on there, the vision board. The vision putting board. It, putting it into a vision board and actually taking those things. We, we do put up those numbers that are on there, but the corresponding goals that are achieved by hitting those numbers putting it onto a vision board and putting it right alongside that GPS. All right. I'm going to challenge you guys, by the way, for next month on November 18th, because you're going to come to this class again at 1 PM. What we're going to do is if you're brave enough, I'd love for you to have your completed 135 and 411. And I want you to post it publicly. I want, I'm going to hold you accountable to this. And this is a big, this is a huge accountability thing. I, I, I want you to, to put it together, be purposeful with it. And then I want you to post it. 
And if you need help with this at all, find find a friend, find a, a coach, a mentor. They'll actually go through that process with you and give you feedback on it and help you to construct that. Because honestly, any goal that you have, if it's kept internalized or you're the only one that sees it, you need somebody else that's going to help to hold you accountable to it. Mm-hmm. Put it out there into the universe and stuff. And if you make somebody laugh, you know that you, you're dreaming pretty good. <laughs> that's very true. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I think that's concluded. Now we can officially mic drop. Again, that is my email address, LizHenryKW.com. Um, I will be back again next month. Um, I will have a different guest host with me. Um, but I, you did not get fired. But <laughs> drop in, to, email me, email Ryan, uh, email your team leads, email your folks if you want to see us teach a class on getting naked with your numbers about PLs. I feel like that would be very helpful. And I just fall and told you of a class you're teaching. <laughs> oh, Lord. Can you, this deck? can you send this deck out? Can you share the deck you just walked us through? Absolutely. I will. If you guys drop your emails into the chat, I will go ahead and I will email those all out to you. Um, if you want to email me directly for any other information, please feel free to. I'm happy to share with whatever. All right, y'all. I'm going to say adios at this point in time. I will let you guys go on to your fabulous rest of your Thursday. Um, Again, if you have any other questions, let me know. If not, have an awesome rest of the week. See you guys later. See you guys. Thanks.